Hey, Kevin. How much time have you and Andrew spent talking about roster cuts that are coming up this weekend? Uh, quite a bit, Scott. We spend a lot of time together talking about a lot of things, but obviously that's around the corner here. So uh, really good dialogue between Andrew and myself, between Andrew and the coaches, uh, the coaches and the personnel staff. Uh, it's, it's really hard decisions are going to be made, and, that, and that's a testament to the players that Andrew and his staff have brought in. And do you have a philosophy about whether or not you want to keep two or three quarterbacks? And is it any different because of the circumstances of this year? Uh, I think we'll talk through all that, Scott. But at the end of the day, regardless of position, you, we want to make sure you're just keeping the best players. Dan Lobby, your line's open. Hey, Coach, we just talked to JoJo Natson, and uh, obviously he's a guy who's known for his kick returns. But, uh, you know, we've seen him work at receiver. Do, do you see him as more of a kick returner on this roster? I see him as a football player. Uh, I think he certainly has the return ability, but there's, uh, there's no shortage of things that we can do with JoJo, and uh, we look forward to using him. Thanks. Nate Ulrich, you're up. Kevin, um, how did Miles Garrett uh, make it out of yesterday when we were out there for a little bit of time? We saw him kind of messing with the wrist, like might have been uncomfortable. So how did he make it through the rest of it? And do you have anybody else coming back today out of the guys who've been sitting out? Yeah, Miles did a nice job yesterday. He, he's no worse for the wear. And uh, no, I don't think there's anybody else coming back up. All right, our next question will be from Daryl Ryder. Hey, Coach. Um, obviously, this is a special teams-heavy type of day here. Um, could you talk about Mike Prefer, uh, you know, one of the holdovers from last year, and just how valuable he's been for you in this transition, getting to know the players that you inherited, and then also, you know, just kind of like, you know, maybe behind the scenes with some of your uh, plan B, C, D, E, F, and G stuff that you're having to do because of COVID and, and everything that, that's going on. Yeah, Coach Prefer and I go way back uh, and really have enjoyed spending a bunch of time with Coach Prefer. And, and I really can lean on him with his knowledge of the roster with the guys that have been here. Uh, Coach Prefer is so organized. So the two of us uh, sit down and talk a lot about scheduling. You know, back in the day, Coach Prefer was doing schedules for Tom Coughlin in Jacksonville. So he's somebody that I lean on in that area and uh, on a personal level, just thrilled to be working with him again. All right, thank you, Daryl. We're gonna to go to Tom Withers, Tom. Hey coach, I understand you had a um, Zoom call with Terry Francona not too long ago. I was just wondering how that conversation went and um, if you sought any advice from him. Uh, conversation went great uh, with uh, Terry and, and the whole Indians crew. Uh, you know, it's, a, it's always good when we can get together and collaborate. I think it's a special community here. That, that we're looking to, to help out in any way we can. So uh, obviously Tito's a, 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 a stalwart in this city. So somebody that I want to get to know. And back to Scott Petrick. Hey, Kevin, how much emphasis have you guys put on the impact of the return game? I know there's an area that um, Mike wasn't happy with or satisfied with last year. Yeah, I think, Scott, when we're putting this plan together and as we're building this team, we're trying to shore up any areas that we thought maybe there were deficiencies and double down on the strengths. So uh, we really want to make sure that our return game is a weapon uh, for us to because this is a field position game. And is it tough choosing between different body types like a JoJo Natson and a Donovan Peoples-Jones? I think everybody brings a little bit something different to the table. And uh, I can tell you that I've seen really big returners uh, in my day. Uh, Cordero Patterson comes to mind. Uh, then there's some of those little guys, Darren Sproles comes to mind, that, that are just hard to get on the ground. So I think they come in all shapes and sizes. Daryl Ryder. Hey, Coach, I know you said you want to keep the best football players when it comes to roster construction or whatever. But I am curious, though, similar to what you were asked about, number of quarterbacks. Are, are you a coach that when you go into that final weekend, that you have in mind, I want to keep X number tight ends, X number receivers, et cetera, across the board? Or do you just strictly go with best football player regardless of position? And how does that mesh with Andrew and his philosophy? Yeah, I think Andrew does a great job in, in, have, in seeing this thing and, and having a global view of it. 
Uh, I don't think there's any hard, fast number rules on you have to keep X number of players. Uh, that's where I go back. I really believe at every position, you just keep the best football players. Uh, to Nate Ulrich. Hey, Kevin, we talked to Austin Seibert. So the big question is, who's growing the better mullet, him or Jamie Gillen? And what have you learned about those two guys and, you know, as a, as a really young, uh, you know, kicker, punter tandem? Yeah, I don't have any expertise in the mullet game. But, uh, yeah, the, the specialists, they're, they're a different breed. It's kind of like a lot of these meeting rooms. You, when you walk in there, you better be ready. And uh, I, I think that's a tight-knit group. Uh, I think they push each other. I think they're only getting better. It's, you know, two young guys and Charlie. So I, I really think that it's, a, it's got a chance to be a good group. We'll make this our last question. Mary Kay Cabot, you're up. Hey, Coach, just wondering, as you head into the weekend, uh, do you kind of see maybe that receiver position as one that's going to be pretty challenging to, to figure out uh, who's going to stay and who's going to go? Because it seems like there, you know, there's a number of guys that are sort of bunched up there for that third receiver spot. And, uh, you know, even as I'm looking through and trying to figure out uh, who should stay and who should go, it, that one looks kind of difficult. I hope they're all difficult, Mary Kay. I, I really do. And, and I think as you look at our roster in, in, in total, uh, there's some really good football players and there's some tough decisions to be made. And I think Andrew is going to do a great job. We, we've had those discussions. Uh, we, we've pushed back on each other, challenged each other. But I think Andrew uh, will, will make some really good informed decisions with uh, a lot of help from uh, the coaches and the personnel group. Do you feel like maybe the special teams uh... – you know, Mike might need one of those guys so you can kind of get away with having an extra receiver. You're, you're always mindful of special teams uh, when it comes to, to this. And that's kind of goes into, you need the best 53 football players and, and really, and in a lot of ways, special teams factors into that for sure.